Hello, darling.
There might be a chance of you jumping the fence and going after him. Hello, <laughs> hey. <laughs> chopper boy. Hello, chopper boy. Hello, chopper boy. Got his ears, must be sensitive. Banjo boy.
good. Yeah, good job. Good job. Good job. Standing up for himself. Yeah. <laughs> hey, they, him and his brother, they do it in such a just, just their body. Ah, oh, the presence, don't they? Yeah. yeah their body language, their posture. Yeah, they're not, they're not vocal and they're not showing. No, they don't growl teeth. or bare teeth. They just. But they're just sitting there going right in their face, like, you ready? You make the move. Oh, he loves Roscoe. Yeah. She is 
so naturally the high ranking oil, you know. <laughs> She's like five, what, five or six months old. Oh, wait right till she's You still got your coffee shirt on. You still got your coffee shirt, mate. Settle it. Next, good boy. Just pass, okay? Good boy. Good boy. I got that on camera. Good girl, good girl. I was too late. Good girl. Oh, gee. Good boy. Good boy, mate. Good boy. He just he jumps up and just commits to me. Hello, mate. Good boy. Good boy, buddy. Oh, Matilda, look, she's like, I can do that too. Yeah, good girl, darling. Oh, yes, you're very clever, too. Good boy, buddy. Good job, good job, good job. Don't do that to Tilly. Don't, do that to Tilly. Yeah, don't push her off. Smells so good. Give a bath yesterday. Bath she yesterday. did, yeah. Smell amazing too. Maxine asked if she had incontinence and I said she does have a bit. Yeah. She was a bit on the nose. Was she? Yeah. She's a bit pony. Oh, Miss Kitty. So we got a few of them. Yep. <laughs> I'm not pointing at you, cutie couple pie. A like couple a... of leaking dogs. Yeah, that was an awkward time to just go into <laughs> cutie pie. She's like, She's I like, don't have incontinence. Not yet. Oh, good. I can hold for three days. <laughs> she can, actually. <laughs> she never wants to go pee pee. No. Oh, cute. Better than that, mate. Come on, chop. Come on, chop. Jump up here, buddy. Can you do it? Chop it. Chop it. Oh, good boy, chop. 
Hey Rover boy. Oscar's coming up. Oh dear, he might push Oscar, off. Yeah. Oscar. Might, no, 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 don't do him. At, oh, goodness. Come on, mate. Oh. 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 Gussie. Next time, use the ramp, mate. Gussie's like, look, he's like, give me a go. Let me over here. Gussie, just use the ramp, buddy. Look, there it is. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Hey, Gussie boy. Hey, mate. Oh, oh, Gussie. G'day, guys. We're down here in the playground today and we're having a social training session for Cruiser. Been working pretty hard with Cruiser behind the scenes with his training. He's been doing very well. And so we're out here uh, keeping it relatively low key and, and pretty calm, but starting to let the dogs branch off play with their individual groups, start to pick up some toys, uh, start to pick up the energy a little bit compared to what Cruiser's used to, but um, mainly focusing around helping Cruiser learn to play properly uh, in an environment that we do here, not the play style that he's used to. So he's doing really, really well. Uh, Diesel's outside running around chasing those birds up there near the house. Um, he's got all the bushland and the, and the big paddock to free roam and he's entertaining himself like he loves to do and we're just hanging out down here trying to get some of these interactions uh, between the dogs uh, some of them mended and then a couple uh, new relationships starting with uh, with cruiser so it's uh, it's all going well so far and oh sorry mate 
So for those at home that may not um, be up to date with all the videos mm -hmm. um, or may have missed yep. um, some updates on Cruiser. Yep. Cruiser is a dingo that um, has, well, what is he, 18 months old, mm -hmm. I think now. But um, he has missed out on socialization and um, domestication. Yeah, so Cruiser, uh, wild born dingo, uh, pretty well lived a sheltered life as far as uh, socialization goes. Didn't really have much contact with any other dogs outside of one other dog in the household. And really is learning everything from scratch. He, he's a very intelligent uh, animal, but he's got a lot to learn as far as what it's life, what it's like living in a domestic environment with a large pack of dogs. So there's a lot of positives that he has naturally and instinctively, but there are some of his wild instincts that are coming through which uh, don't have any place in a domestic environment. So we're basically just helping him retrain and relearn the rules of or adjust into a domestic environment. And that's, that's the main purpose of today is that everyone's included, we're all part of the same pack. And, um, you know, just because Cruiser identifies some of the dogs as uh, a little bit less capable than himself, uh, doesn't mean that they're gonna leave the pack. He needs to accept them for who they are. So, but he's doing really well. We've seen a big change in his behavior uh, over the last couple of days after all this training and he is starting to take a much more light-hearted approach to interacting with these dogs, which is a great sign. He's very, very intelligent and he is learning very quickly. So, we've got high hopes that it's um, onwards and upwards for the cruiser. And it is a, lot, a more light-hearted approach, isn't it? Because mm. he was um, making like... A bit serious. Very, very serious assessments, like, yeah. uh, you know, towards some of the members of the pack yeah. that um, uh, we're surely not going to make it. Yeah. Um, uh, if you're... That's right. If you're on my team, exactly. you know. You're, you're not going to be able to bring down anything. <laughs> you're out. <laughs> I, just, I just picture it like... Um, you know, uh, a bit of a misfit bunch of military people and then a real strict commander walks in and goes, you're out, you're out, you're out, rest of you, let's go. You know what I mean? <laughs> like he's just hand-picked his team and gone, you guys don't cut it. <laughs> um, and so he's decided that, um, well, he, he was... He was thinking that maybe Tank and Chopper weren't on his team. Oh yeah, he, he, he really um, didn't didn't uh, respect their passive, easygoing nature at all. Mm. He just totally pegged them as, you guys are weak, get out of here. Yeah, cause, yeah? and it's interesting though, because um, we do have, whilst we've got um, a lot of dogs that you know, just haven't found their place elsewhere, yeah. you know, um, misfits, if, if you like. Oh, yeah, we're um, a bunch of misfits. <laughs> but they were all very um, quite strong and brave individuals. Um, they're, and all, they're all very um, independently strong. Yeah. So they don't always have the same strengths, which is why they're a bunch of misfits. But they do have independent strengths. Absolutely. But I, I was leading to the fact that Tank and Chopper probably are the exceptions in terms well, they, of their personalities. They have a very different way of presenting themselves. Yeah. Because we know them um, inside out now. Yeah. We know. We, we know that they're actually very strong dogs. But. Um, they don't show that initially. So Tank and Chopper don't play the verbal game. Mm. So a lot of dogs will talk the talk and that's their game, you know? Look how tough I am, I'm barking, I'm loud, I'm showing posture and body language. 
but when it comes down to it, you know, they might tuck tail and run. Whereas Tank and Chopper are just so easy going and laid back that they don't, they've got no interest in talking a tough game. However, if they're pressed, they stand their ground. And they even at that point they don't do any talking. They just stand there as if to go. Mm. Are we ready? Are we doing this? Let's do it. You know they're they're ready to go. The reason we're pointing it out is because um, a cruiser has been um, targeting tank and chopper. Yeah. But it's not the first time that um, they have been singled out by other dogs. Well, tank has been. Um, not singled out but a bit of a glutton for punishment when he first arrived when he was so enthusiastic on making friends and playing that he was a bit too much for a lot of the dogs mm. and even when they sort of you know did a little bit of a gruff or showed a growl or like leave me alone he would just be like you love me mm. and throw himself at them you know and he doesn't do like, that as much now though does he not not as much but i still seem to do it to freddo yeah, okay. Yeah. Still just like, but he used to do it to all dogs, Every didn't he? One of them, yeah. yeah. And so that that was I a sign of weakness to some it dogs, was, wasn't it? Was it was received as a sign of weakness, yeah, mm. because he was just so so um, dedicated to be friends with everyone mm. that he's like saying, I'm on my back, I'm no threat, yeah. come on, love me. But everyone, uh, not everyone, but a few dogs like the young dogs that were reaching maturity i.e barney and banjo they mm. were keys in that have never experienced that and so they didn't know how to use that power so then um you know they took that as weakness and you know decided to grow in their own strength and and um you know react back to that but uh i think that it just to me shows how and it wasn't cool it wasn't are. just it wasn't just um our pack members it well, was no, also holiday, holiday dogs, dogs as well definitely i'm Mate. just saying it like it, it but the holiday dogs weren't as innocent they actually took it pretty seriously and yeah, yeah. but our, our dogs were a little bit more you know yeah it was just relationship that's right um yeah. uh, we, we had a bit of an issue with some holiday dogs so, with these guys but it's no surprise that cruiser is um giving them a lot of attention I guess. Well, it's normal for the, you know, most dogs talk it up and, and, and say, leave me alone verbally or they... Roscoe is the king of that. Exactly. The king of attitude. Uh, whereas these guys are just silent, mm. playful, uh, happy-go-lucky dogs. Um, until they're pressed, until they feel like they're being hard done by. And I think Cruiser has done that to them. So and now so... they... Um, and people will see, because I have... I have videoed some of it, um, but just before this conversation. So they're going to see the footage of um, Chopper and Tank using their body to yeah. say to Cruiser, you can't pick up, you know. That's or... right. That's right. And they're just presenting themselves in front of him as if to say, your move. You know, I'm ready. What yeah. Are you gonna do? I'm not uh, going to try to be your friend anymore. No. Mm. Yeah, unfortunately, which is part of the reason why we had to uh, switch tactics and go into a training role with Cruiser, uh, because he was starting to sour some relationships for himself, and to prevent that from happening, we've had to um, increase the training that he's received, and he's doing quite well now. Mm. There's still some mending that needs to happen between these two. Thank you, Mm. Um, yeah, it's something. It's something for me personally that I really think is one of Tank and Chopper's strengths. Mm. You know that they are just so happy and just calm and peaceful and no agenda. Just want to have a good time. That you know, it's it's in a way to their own detriment as far as the perception of the way the other dogs see them. Mm. But really. It just shows how strong and confident they actually are. Mm. Not, they don't care about having to pretend that, you know, or care about what other people think of them. Mm. It's, really, it's a really cool trait. So, um, in the past, on other videos, um, individuals have commented, um, 
predicting that possibly Chopper could be quite up there eventually because oh, yeah. of his personality. Mm. You know, he does seem like that wise soul. He definitely, he definitely shows the signs um, more so than Tank. Tank, Tank, you know, goes around asking for it, and Chopper does his own thing. Just goes mm. about his business and. It is a, a good trait to have, and once he matures a little bit further, you're right, I do think that he will naturally be given that respect. It's just part of that, that uh, general demeanour, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, um, someone asked why Cruiser doesn't pick on Cutie Pie, being, you know, a tiny little dog because he um, weeds out the weak pack members? Is that what well, so um, the we members? did recently speak about this um, on a members video, yeah. um, a bit more in depth about Cruiser's training yeah. and um, how... I must say, I'm a little bit shocked that someone would think that Cutie Pie <laughs> is not a high-ranking pack member. <laughs> she most certainly is. Have you not seen a take-off photo? <laughs> So, but you know what? It's a very good question. Yeah. Kitty Pie is a teeny weeny little dog. Look yeah. at her. But it's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. Yeah. And uh, Kitty Pie's got plenty of fight. <laughs> She's the size of a Rottweiler. Yeah. You should, just the fact that she can, you know, one finger technique the shepherds, turn them on their back, make them, make them <laughs> wince and say, you're, you're, you're all supreme, Miss Kitty Pie in front of all the other dogs. They all see that and go, I don't know what she did, but I don't want her to do it to me. <laughs> you know? I'm shaking in my yeah, boots. <laughs> yeah, just stay over there, kid, right? <laughs> so there is... So she's got cruiser full. He doesn't, yeah. um, he doesn't, um, like, yeah, focus she's... on her at, at all. No. no, it's definitely, um, definitely a dog that talks the talk, but if it came down to it, wouldn't be able to walk. No. You know, but that's why that's her game. That's what she has to do. Yeah, she's pretty much the opposite of Tank and Chopper. Yes, that's a good point. You know? Yeah, Tank and Chopper have got all the toughness in the world, mm. and if you come down to it, they're gonna, you know, really do some damage. But they don't. That's not their personality. They'll only ever use it if they're defending themselves. They don't pick on anyone. You know, they don't push it around. No. Whereas Cutie Pie knows. Yep. She's the smallest dog here. So she's got to talk the biggest game. Yes. Yeah. She does. Yeah. Yep. So. She's such a smart little little dog, isn't she? Off the boy. She's so smart. So smart. Hello. So, oh, Miss Pie, you smell beautiful too. So just quickly with Cutie Pie. Yeah. Um. Everyone's seen now on a couple of occasions Joey chewing Cutie Pie's back. Yeah. And um, Cutie Pie, you know, is totally not phased. Not phased by it at all. Yeah. But the the last time there was a number of comments um, of concern. Yeah, I felt for, the same thing. Yeah. I was like, oh, I wonder for if Cutie going Pie. On there. Yeah. So we've been thinking it also because it has come out of the blue. Yeah. It's not like Joey's always gnawed on um, Cutie Pie's back. Uh, it seems to be, it seems to be something that's just started, and then it was kind of like, oh wow, this is interesting. You know how cute yeah. it is. But then I started thinking, because ah, Joey ah, is ah, a very ah, intelligent. Oh, oh, gee, Roscoe. Right, Joey is a very ah. intelligent dog. Yeah. Um, and she does love Cutie and yet, Pie. Here about how dogs sniff mm. out skin cancers in their owners and things like that. So we booked Cutie Pie in to have a checkup just in case. Yep. Because why not? Why not? Yeah. yeah. It might be something that is like the earliest detection ever. And yeah. Then Joey goes into being some <laughs> detection dog. <laughs> Joey, step on that. <laughs> oh, um. Miss Pie, so beautiful. Yeah. Likely is nothing. Yeah. Um, 
but just to be sure. Absolutely. Go We'd never forgive ourselves, would we, little kitty boy? If it was so Oh, Miss Poy, so beautiful. <laughs> Best mate, isn't it? Yeah. Oof, you love the pie. Joey and Tilly both yeah. adore cutie pie. <laughs> we're trying to find out the actual number. We stopped counting like seven <laughs> dogs ago, and we're always confused we're always how wrong. many dogs we have. So we've got four shepherds. We've got um, three boxes. So we'll go like that. Three boxes. We got three staffies. We have um, Abra. We got the two brothers, Tang and Chopper. We got Tilly, Joey, Cutie Pie. We've got Roscoe, Freddo. We've got Abra. You already did Abra. Did I? That's You're 19. up to Rover. Okay, so we'll swap for Rover. That's So, and, and cruiser. 21. Yeah. So 21 with Canines. cruiser. Yeah. And nine cats. So basically, there's a lot of dynamics going on. So everything we do though here, everything that we, our whole objective our, and our main goal is just for everyone to live their best life and all get along and live together. So people might think that that just sounds absurd. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it does sound maybe, you they, know, because they, they... we, we're not, we don't um, kennel, yeah. you know, like that's not the objective. We do obviously have to isolate when they're still in and training, training or, and they yeah. need, they can only um, come out under supervision. But the end goal is for everybody to get along and, and be free roaming together. Yeah. But if you think about it, the majority of our dogs that we've got here have all come from paths where they were really antisocial or, mm. you know. Or even um, at the lower end, like, um, you think about um, even little Miss Violet and Miss Red, mm. um, they haven't been bred for temperament. For None temperament. of our dogs are being bred for temperament. Yeah. So, um, so there's always a lot to manage. Um, but what it, I guess the point we're trying to make is that um, every day we work really hard at working on relationships mm. and training, individual training, group training, yeah, all of those things. We don't show it on the videos. No, there's a lot that goes into it and um, I but, suppose the, every time we get a new um, dog that comes through or Diesel or Cruiser or whoever's coming in, there's always that adaptation period. There's always that. For everybody. Every it's not one. just the yeah. dog that arrives but, but then, it's... Like if you look at uh, Cruiser for example, he's only just discovering this right now. Like he, most dogs will get socialization from a young puppy when they first go to a dog park or when they first go to uh, the cafe or you know whatever their lifestyle is they will come into contact with other dogs at an early stage and they just accept that oh yep there's other animals around and we're all friendly and you know that's how they learn to be social to have play groups and whatnot here we have cruiser born in the wild taken chained up for a few months then, um, you know, rescued into a household. And very well cared and, for. Yeah, well cared for, but just protected and fenced off and, um, you know, given everything they need as far as survival, but as far as socialization and experience, you know, he's been very sheltered. So he's learning this for the first time. So he's a, now uh, almost a fully mature dingo and he's, he understands how capable he is. He understands how fast and how agile and how strong he is. So when he's seeing these things for the first time, he's got a different 
um, a different level of uh, you know reactions he can do compared to what a puppy would be used to. So uh, this is all very normal for him. It's actually very he's handling it very very well. He's not seen a group of dogs all play together. He thinks he's misunderstanding it. He's misreading it. Um, but now we're focusing on developing his uh, training. He's taking it all very, very well, and he's adapting very, very quickly. So I am very impressed with how he's going. Um, it's, it would be perfect, and it would be so amazing if they just come in on the first day, and they just come into the pack, and everything's perfect, and there's no issues, but it doesn't work like that. <laughs> it never works like that. What I'm impressed with is how quickly he's adapting and how fast he's progressing. Mm. You know, it is a really positive thing. I know there's people out there that are like, oh, how come Cruiser can't do this or can't do that? And, you know, what you've got to remember is just how impressive uh, it is that he's taking all this on and taking it in his stride and adapting to this new environment. That, that's a sign of um, a high level of intelligence and, and you've got to take your hat off to him for it. So Because he, um, not only has he not really, he hasn't been socialised um, properly with dogs, he also hasn't been socialised properly with people, humans. Mm, definitely. Yeah. Um, so it has been restricted to um, just a handful of people that he has come into contact with, and there have been um, there's there's been tension between him and males. It does um, seem that way, yeah. And, and well, that was that was the story that, that said, we were given. Yeah. yeah. He, he doesn't like males. He he only likes her. Mm. Um, but so, also he hasn't come in contact with any children you know and that's a really that big was, one for socialization that was pretty evident the children one that's that's a really big one as far as any uh, domestic dog or pet family pet mm. they've got to learn to live with kids kids are a natural part of um, life as living far a as domestic life, domestic life. Uh, um, so as when it comes to Cruiser, he's just got that same attitude that he does with the pack and in his opinion the lesser ranking pack members as far as the kids are concerned when you look at them objectively they're young they're not as capable they're not as strong they're not as um, you know physically um, able at this point so of course he's seeing it as a weakness and that's just totally understandable for, for who he is and what he's doing so it's just again another case of another part of the learning curve but we need to get this part down first and once he's completely got all these uh, pack dynamics sorted and, and the pack life and all that stuff then we can ask for something a little bit more challenging which would, would be going with, uh, with the kids. But he's still showing very strong signs of nervousness for any anyone who's not you or I, mm. really. Um, he's very wary of, of new people, new um, experiences. He's showing a um, you know clear signs of wanting to avoid any new vehicles that come in, any new uh, like the pool man or whoever. Staff members. Staff members. Yeah, it's definitely definitely a big human element that needs to be overcome uh, as well the, as yeah, yeah as well as the, so we're just sharing job. that um so that everyone understands i guess the the journey that um cruiser is undertaking mm. like it like you say there is um so much learning for him um, he's got a he's got a big uh a big steep uphill climb yeah. ahead of him to be uh, at the best he can be in a domestic environment. Mm. So people have asked, um, you know, are you concerned that that is not possible? You know, no. he's a wild born dingo mm. and, um, you know, we have shown some um, footage of, um, you know, how he targets the lesser ranking yep. um, dogs and you know that it's a good question you know when when you um when you see it and you hear it 
um, it makes sense that there's a possibility that he he wouldn't. Yeah, if you're not going to put the time into him, if you're not going to put the training and the effort into him, you're not going to, you know, focus on those little milestones and help him overcome them all, then yeah, it would be an uphill battle that most people wouldn't undertake. Yeah. But I don't see it as unachievable. It's just a matter of time. So we, um, because of the path that we've chosen, whilst, yes, we are very, very busy caring for all these animals, um, we have all the time in the world for cruiser, you know, even that said, you know, that's, that's the whole point of what we're doing here. That's the whole point you know, of today, the whole day. And also, the last few weeks you know, why we gave up daycare is so that we can um, give him everything he needs um, in terms of training and time. Yeah. Um, in, Generally speaking, though, um, he might not be able to achieve, you know, uh, this without that time and training. Uh, yeah, he definitely. If you just left him and you didn't put that time in and then start pushing him to overcome a few hurdles, um, yeah, he wouldn't get there. He'd prefer to avoid mm. and just keep that, you know, at a distance. He doesn't, mm. he doesn't see the need to be involved in anything like that so um yeah, but that, that but that said um he very much wants to be a part of our pack doesn't he definitely wants to be a part of the pack there's <laughs> yeah. no question about that i was talking about yes kids. yeah yeah uh he would just rather avoid yeah yeah so um but that you know that is definitely a hurdle that we have to overcome but it'll be definitely later down the track because there's always going to be a point out of accident or out of just coincidence or whatever there'll always be a point where two a kid and a dog will just be minding their own business and find themselves in a position where they may feel one's cornered the other but it's totally innocent and a dog like oh, sorry an animal like cruiser uh with the behavior that he's showing it, it's not going to end well so um he he would likely choose to avoid the situation right. but we're talking we're talking about fl the flight fight response here and if he can't flight then um he he does yeah so but anyway um you know we're aware of all of these things and um, you're working every day behind the scenes, you know, to help Cruiser get there and we yeah. truly believe that he will get there. Yeah. Just It'll just be a lot and a lot of time. It's not something that's going to happen, you know, in just a few weeks or, yeah. you know, it's going to be a long journey. It's very intelligent. It's showing a lot of promise. Um, there is that real nervousness of being a wild animal and untrusting of new things is holding his progress back. Mm. Like he does want to shy away a lot more than anything else, which basically, you know, is effectively him just putting the blinkers over his eyes and saying, I don't want to deal with it. Mm. You know, I'd, I'd rather just hide away and when it's gone, I'll come out. You know? uh, so that does hold back progress because you can't force them out of that. You do have to give them the time to want to come out of there and be a bit more confident and then investigate. Um, and, and that's something that he's going to dictate how long that's going to take. Any dog that doesn't have those nervous and um, weary tendencies or something new and they're just happy to take it on and whatever it is I'll react to, it's easy to teach them how to react if they're willing to take it on in the first place. Uh, however, when they don't, that's when it's all up to Cruiser. We'll just keep hanging out with him. We'll just keep building his trust, um, building the relationship, and then start introducing some of those challenging scenarios. Mm -hmm. Now, Abra, she's a whole nother story. <laughs> yeah, see, Abra's not scared of her. <laughs> Look at her. her. Even Big she, Banjo. She's there. totally just telling Banjo. Like, this is a... What is she now? Would She'd she be? be six She'd now. be six months now. I'm guessing, yeah, just under. Six months. That's just still such a puppy. But nothing scares her. 
No one intimidates her. No one intimidates her, no. It is unique, isn't it? I find it pretty unique, yeah. It's like, it's quite fascinating that, you know. It's impressive. Mm. It, it is impressive and it's no... Because we see a dog. lot of dogs come through here and, yeah. um, and there, there are some members in our pack that are very intimidating. Well, even, um, like even Tilly and Lily, right? They're two of the more mature of our pack. They put up a very strong... Front. Front. Mm. And within 72 hours, mm. I saw both of them back down to her, mm. to, to Abra. And I just remember thinking, you got some gumption. Mm. You know, this is this is no pretend dog over here. No. Um, and not not back down because there was any standoff or anything like that. It was literally both Lily and Tilly on two separate occasions tried to tell Abra off, and Abra just turned around and gave them both the biggest mouthful. And both of them like, whoa, 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 whoa. I yeah, I don't, I don't want this. You know? Yeah. She's got the crazy factor. Yeah. You know? It's like, oh, you're crazy. I don't want none of this. So maybe um, on that note, um, we could give an update on Abra um, and how she's going. Mm -hmm. So like with her training, her socialization, because um, she's a really interesting case, isn't she? She's different, so. different to um, every, every dog every that comes dog. here is different and has their own story. They have their own strengths, they have their own weaknesses, they have their own, uh, you know, intelligence level, a capability of learning, mm. capability of comprehending. They're, they're all different. Abra is very impressive in a number of fronts. And one of the things that I find with Abra is she doesn't need to be shown five or six times before she understands. Most dogs need to see, oh, something happened there, missed that, what was that? Oh, yeah, I think I got it, what was it again? You know, and you just have to keep pointing out, this is what's going on, this is what's going on. Abra sees it and goes, yeah, okay, no worries. You know, that's, that's her thing, she <laughs> understands. So, let's say for um, uh, an, an average dog, I'm not gonna say, what an average dog might be but but in saying that um, though can i just what on the point of you know you only telling her once or twice and she uh, she comprehends yep. right i'm not challenging that thought mm. however she does have like um breed Yes, I wasn't going to get into that just oh, yet. Oh, okay. That's different. Yeah, because everyone's going to be like, well, she, you know, she, yeah. she can't snap out of um, no, the, her no, focus no, no. on Kitty. No, no, um, no. She's. No, that's that's very different. And what I'm, mm. what and and so okay, this good. is yeah. This is where we go back to not wanting to change the dogs. Yeah, wiring, agree. And not agree. wanting to change the dog's DNA and 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 you know instincts. Yeah. But what I'm teaching her is, yes, you can focus on that. Yes, you can go about doing those things, but no, you can't bite. Mm. You know, so I'm allowing her to have all those triggers and all those um, stimulating things that she naturally responds to. So that's why a lot of the time you'll hear me, Abra, 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 you know, because she's focusing on it and then she might be getting a little bit too close. And so I'm just reminding her, yep, that's about as far as you can go. Don't go past that point. Um, now, and she's very responsive to that. Very responsive. Yeah. So, and this is why I'm saying she's so smart, because every time I say that, she knows. Oh, yeah, was it that point? Okay, that was that point. You know? Yeah. Whereas most dogs would just be like, yeah, I'm going to do it anyway, and then whatever. Now, just quickly, I'll just touch on it, but the only reason why she is doing it on that, on that um, Abra <laughs> Is because of the relationship that you've built with her through the um, training that you've put in. Correct. Like so, it's not like um, 
I don't know anybody walking in here is going to be able to stop her from like yeah no, it's very much you know relationship that we have like like I think she's she started to um, respond a bit more for you yeah but uh, definitely those intense scenarios or yeah she she's not going to do that for everyone um, <clears throat> but you don't want her to a dog of her background and and what they're bred for you don't want them to listen to anyone you don't want them to have like just respond to the command no matter who's saying it like well they're not bred for it yeah. and so that's why um people would probably be able to see i guess even just in the videos that are shared um how quickly and how intensely she has bonded to you mm. because they are bred for that mm. um you know it's not that she doesn't she does listen to me but the relationship isn't there um like you have with her mm. um where she's going to the go to the end of the earth to do the right thing um by you yeah but she's bred for that yeah exactly right we're not talking about her DNA and her instincts and her breed specific traits. She like boundary exercises, uh, rules on jumping up, you know, all that kind of stuff. She just like, oh, no, I'll do this. No worries. And just cut it out like mm. instantly. You don't see that very often in dogs. Mm. You know, I've seen it once before and it was with Wallace. Mm. Um, but, but Abra is just that way inclined that she just gets it. Mm. Um, so you can see why they use to do really complex training because they're just so capable um, but when it comes to everything else there it's it's really another set of rules for her that it is for some of the other dogs just like it's a different set of rules for um, you know cruiser different different style for cruiser than mm. it is for everyone else yeah um, so we're just sort of tailoring her um, guidance and input to suit her and, and her needs and there is a little bit of leeway that we're giving her and wanting her to start to play a little bit more be a little bit more um, playful rather than serious and she has very quickly can and very easily can turn um, into a very serious posture and uh, like we saw before, uh, barking at banjo, and but we want her to also learn how to relax and have fun and and be submissive in a game, and it not take away from any you know perception that other dogs are her co and her co own self esteem that's and right. confidence. Yeah, like yeah. so, that's something that's quite complex. Yeah, not not really in her personality. Mm. Mm. And so what it will do is it will limit how far and how much she can connect with the other dogs. She'll always be that, that dog that has to win every game, even if it's a pretend. You know mm. what I mean? Mm. Um, <clears throat> so there's another level there where I'm trying to uh, allow her some freedoms to make those discoveries. And yeah, it's obviously, it's obviously not what usual uh dogs would go into i.e uh her, of her breed ppd dogs they they wouldn't be going into that kind of thing but here we are living here and we found uh, ourselves in a position where she's most likely going to end up in a domestic environment <coughs> hey as opposed to a working environment and, yeah exactly as opposed to a working environment so um these are the skills that she needs to learn um, it, a lot of people have asked and I have joked in saying that no she doesn't but um, <laughs> people have asked does Abra ever sleep oh. because you know how inside yeah. at night time um, all the other dogs mm. are um, relaxing and um, often asleep yep. but um, Abra is always laser focused on yeah. on kitty but not so much anymore <laughs> well it's she still can and she still she still can but i don't 
I've stopped letting her follow Kitty around now. Yeah. So where we You've all, been practicing Yeah, so where we all drops hang out and, and stop. If, yeah. if she's lying on the carpet and Kitty walks past, she's not allowed to get up and follow her. Yeah. If Kitty's staying there, then sure. But it's mm. basically for Kitty's sake, just to get the the shadow off her back. Yeah. Um, so she's so, um, so she's been she's doing some training to, in the evenings yeah. on that. Now and she's there's starting some, to disengage a bit more. And, she's understanding the rules that you're implementing just for her. Yeah. Um, but I have also noticed that she has softened a lot more with I Kitty. So. No, um, even though I know that she she still is focused on Kitty. But even this morning, I'm pretty sure I got it. Um, I got a bit of a video on it. But she gave Kitty a kiss, you know, on the nose, oh, yeah. and it was a real one. You know, it wasn't just a. No, I just want to let me just taste you. Oh, yep, yeah. you taste as good as Delicious. I am. I imagined you to be. <laughs> So I do think that um, she is softening. Yeah. Um, will she meet the kittens? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I agree with you. I think that she is mm. softening and she is starting yeah. to learn to be vulnerable and she's starting to not take it as a hit to her pride or anything. She is such a soft l little submissive marshmallow to the children. Yeah. Is, that's an interesting one. Mm. Like she was abandoned, like not abandoned, but she was surrendered back to the shelter because um, she was continuously biting the children and drawing blood. Yeah. Um, and they said about... how dangerous she was yeah. and all of those things. And yes, when she did come here, it was pretty bad. But now knowing her, she was just doing it out of love. Yeah. And she didn't know how to act didn't know how to behave around kids. Yeah. She did it. She, she, behaved she used the way to bite that, you, you yeah, know. She behaved the way that a Dutchy Mally would, you know. <laughs> I love you. Arr. I love you even more. Arr. Let me hang up your arm. But um, she now, like, um, she's just so sweet. She gets yeah. giddy around them. Um, yeah. You know, her ears drop down. Um, she even, even wiggles um, her bottom. Yeah. Even when there's food and you think, oh, she's just going mm. for the food. She just totally will smell the food and go exa know exactly what it is and then just want to be there and get loved by the kids. Yeah. She loves it. Yeah. There she goes. She's lying down. Oh, yeah, there we go. That's an <laughs> she might even style. close her eyes. <laughs> right on cue. Oh. oh hello. <laughs> <laughs> um. Hear diesel chasing birds. Yeah, I can hear birds back there. <laughs> He's barking. So on, let's um just quickly. Oh goodness, sorry. Who was that? Gus. Um, talk about diesel. Mm -hmm. So we've we've we did just do um a separate video on diesel uh, that we're putting together. Um, just so that he has his own um video about him in terms of um, being up for adoption because mm -hmm. um, we have mentioned that um, he's one of those dogs that has come to the farm and um, we've identified or assessed or he's told us really that um, he would much prefer um, a less crowded environment, home yeah. environment mm -hmm. um, it is does give him anxiety <laughs> it, it does he doesn't know how to really process it but uh, he he's showing that he would thrive in a um a quieter yeah so so we are appealing to our farm community to help us with diesel mm. aren't we you know, yeah, well, you know, reminding everyone that he, he is up for adoption and he'd be we a can, wonderful uh, pet. Yeah, we've um, you've um, we given need. him training and he's very high performing in terms of his obedience. Um, and like we said, I mean, I'm going to be recapping all the things that we've said in this video, but, you know, um, he's very low maintenance you know in terms of exercise even though he's a working dog you just open the door and he runs out and chases birds and so we let him out this morning out the back into the bushland he's got all the paddock and bushland to run around 
and he literally just goes, okay, see you at lunch. Yeah. <laughs> takes, off takes off like a rocket and... Goes, chases birds, runs around, sniffs, he's... does his thing. He loves and it. And ha- he will be having the best time of his life. Yeah. That's all he wants to do. And then he'll check back in with us at lunchtime. But he, but he comes in to check out, check in with people. Mm-hmm. He comes in to, yes. you know... Um, he, he, he doesn't really show much interest in making friends with other mm. dogs. Yeah. And so we've had a few dogs that have come through the farm that are like that. Not mm. many, but um, a, a couple. It, is, it can be pretty common in working dogs. Mm. It can be um, a thing where they're just like, no, I've got a job to do. I'm chasing birds today. Yeah. You're only going to slow me down. So, like, down we've talked about this and we said, oh, you know, goodness, Joey and Tilly, they'd probably prefer to um, <laughs> less less dogs in our pack yeah. too. You know, yeah. they, they'd probably prefer it to be just um, Tilly, Joey and Cutie Pie mm. and the human family, yeah. you know. But the difference with them is that whilst we say that, um, they are very relaxed and accepting and do want to be a part of the pack Mm. Um, and they enjoy the company and, um, you know, the activities and all of that. But um, Diesel, like people might remember Molly Mm -hmm. um, and and Chance, you know, um, too, he just – they just wanted a smaller – pack you know and you can see chance is thriving in his new home you know he's got his be- he's got his sister nevaeh you know that was always his bestie yeah. who really gets him yeah. you know and now he's got little brother fred and um he's got two humans that you know just love and adore him and his life is perfect you know um when he was here um he enjoyed it but he would um, most of the time, you know, go off and do his own thing, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Um, so we knew that he would much prefer a life um, with a smaller family. Um, and, you know, Molly was the same. Yeah. And we do really, really, truly feel that Diesel is also that dog. Um, now, he's very happy living here at the moment. Um, routine. And yeah, like, you know, routine, he yeah. goes and chases birds all day, which he loves. And, you know, he comes in for, you know, lunchtime break and he gets pats and food and, you know, all of those things. Yeah, but uh, I don't think it's his, in, his ideal environment. No. Um... So that's why we're appealing to our community to see if we can find a suitable family mm. for him. Um, and it's not, it's not like we're looking for a unicorn here. No, it's not. He's not a... It, just, it really is just someone who has some space. He does need some space to run. If he's got space and freedom to, to run around, he literally doesn't require... Oh, and also that you don't have 20 dogs. <laughs> yeah. I know that one's going to be too hard to find. But he would, be, he would be fine with one dog, two dogs, three dogs, four dogs, you know, a small group. Yeah. But just not um, a great big no. herd of dogs. It's just a bit too much for him. Mm. Um, we've talked about it before that, you know, he, he sees them like a, a herd yeah. of sheep. You know, um, he doesn't see them they as... Just don't, they just don't run like a herd of sheep. Mm. So that's Diesel. Who else have we got here? We've got Rover. Rover boy. He totally flies he's under the radar. Stuff here before. Don't you reckon? Yeah. Like in terms of these um, adoption, like, you know, dogs that are here for training and, um, you know, yeah. up for adoption. Yeah, you ask him, he's like, ah. Oh. I'm not up for adoption. Yeah, I'm, I'm slipping through the table. <laughs> Every time we see the shelter staff, we ask, you know, has anyone, you know, applied or shown any interest in Rover? And the answer is no. No, nah, he's got a bit of a whizzy problem. <laughs> Nobody's keen. <scared. laughs> but he's such a beautiful I, I, boy. Yeah, he's such a beautiful dog. But, you know, 
I can understand people's yeah. reservations when it comes to incontinence. Like you can, we can. You can see in most normal lives mm. that would be a bit of a problem. Because we, um, we initially we're... thought, you know, well, see, we live, we, um, we work outside all day. And um, so, obviously, there's no issue throughout the day, is there? You know? No, not at all. We, you wouldn't, wouldn't notice anything. Um, but when he comes inside, you know, we put the, the nappy on. Um, you just have to give him regular wash downs. Yeah. He can smell a little bit, you know. On the nose. Sometimes. Um, Most days. Yeah, so he does. He he does really need um, a bit of a a bathe bit of, bit of extra daily. Care, daily. Um, I was going to say like we uh, he gave him a bath on what was it Thursday and then today's Friday. The next day he gets yeah. Nose so, um, but he's such a good boy, yeah. you know. He he's very loving. Um, he's very friendly and social. He's so good with the kitties and all the dogs. He's um, so playful. He's so playful. It's um, very interesting to see. Like I do, not many dogs are as playful as him. It can be any any level of intensity. Mm. If there's a hint of a game, he's involved. Yes. Yep. <gasps> we got um, DNA results back for him, didn't we? Should we it talk did. about that here while we're? Sure. <laughs> Rover. We should. We've got to remember. Yeah, I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to remember. I remember a couple of them, but the funny thing about Rover. So we should just let everyone know. Okay, just stop for a second because you might want to. Um, everyone might Press want balls. to have a think about it. Balls, yeah, think um, about what do you think that um, Rover is in terms of um, what breed or breeds make up Rover? Mm. Um, I can't remember how many. You're gonna. Ha we're gonna uh, have to refer five. to. Do you remember them off? No, I need to have a look. I remember three of them. Okay. So I need to, I need to have a look. I remember one because it was like, what? <laughs> you know? <laughs> I remember just thinking, you got to be kidding okay, me. Okay, well, we'll let everybody um, put in their guesses. Yeah. Um, we, we guessed ourselves, but um, I think we might have got the top breed. And I think that's just more because it was obvious. Um, but... Mm. No, we, we didn't did. even do that. Oh, I'm so confused. No, We've we did. done so many now. No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the rest of them, we were so surprised and oh. and um, not on the money at all, were we? Uh, yeah, uh, it was. Uh... I'm remembering the two that I was particularly like, oh wow, but that makes sense now. So should we where's talk? Your, where's your Gmail? I'm gonna. Mm. Otherwise, it's on that phone that you're recording. Oh, yeah, it's there. It there. Okay. So, should we talk about um, what sex they determined Rover to be? Well, with the lead-up question like that, I think it might be pretty obvious. Might it? <laughs> oh. Yes. Because um, they came back to us and asked us if we would like to refill out our yeah. profile for Rover. But um, they didn't have a tick box for hermaphrodite. No. Um, and they just came back and said, Rover, Rover is a female. Definitely female. Yeah, Rover is a female. And uh, if you want to change it on this form. Yeah, like go we've here. got it wrong. And, yeah. And, uh, uh, but they 100% um, tested that he was female. Which we totally knew. We did. The I mean, the course. surgeon said. If did we on the outside, he's male. He is, yeah. On the inside. He's mm. proven to that be female also. Mm. But even his outside um, components are, uh, like the surgeon did say that he suspected that it was more, um, uh, like because it's not even in the position that it normally is on a male dog. Um, we've only just discovered this when trying to fit a belly band on him, which doesn't fit. No need to. Oh talk no, about I know. It. I thought, but it's a good one to raise just because everyone asks why we don't use the belly bands. Yeah, I know. I know and um, so we've just had to move we slightly had to come closer to the reception here, so that we can um, just open the file of uh, Rover's DNA. So we've got Rover's DNA. The 
results are in. Here he is. <laughs> they say. So, so coming in as the majority well, share. Hang on, there's wind. <laughs> no one's going to hear it. We're about to get rained on too, I think. Mr. Gossy boy. Come on, babe. Hiding out of the rain. Gee, a lot of rain and the wind. There's a lot of spiders and wasps. Yep. <laughs> Don't worry about them. Oh, there's the wind. Right. Okay, so we'll try again <laughs> to reveal Rover's uh, DNA. Oh, so coming in at. Uh, the biggest shareholder rover. Look at it, looking at it. <laughs> yep. The biggest percentage. Are we ready for this? Are we ready? I don't think you're ready. <laughs> Might have got some of the other ones, but this one is the curveball. Or should I start with a different one? No, no, go for it. Go for the big ones. American Bulldog. Chance. <laughs> <laughs> rover, you're a spitting image. <laughs> hey, mate. Oh, you. It's probably why they got along. You know, remember yeah. the first day? Yeah. American Bulldog, 25.5%, so wow. one quarter. Wow. That's a so, lot. Yeah, and I dare say there'd probably be a few people that pick this next one. Border Collie, mm -hmm. 20%. Yes. Um, he now, is listed as a Border Collie Cross. Yeah. Now, there are a couple others that are following now, and one I was like, oh, really? But coming in at uh, equal percentages, 14.8 and 14.7, uh, German Shepherd as well as Dutch Shepherd. Bit of Abra in there. Yeah, <laughs> bit of Abra in there. And then we've got, to finish off the five, we've got <laughs> Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Yeah. So a little bit of Staffy in there, which, yep, we can see that. However, there's a pretty significant number here 16.4% super mutt. <laughs> what? They can't determine. They can't determine 16.4% of his DNA. Super mutt. Mm. Yeah, so uh, I thought that was very interesting. American Bulldog. Come on, and he would never have picked it. So, but we should just tell the story of Nala. Yeah, true. Nala, the, Nala the Kelpie Cross. Because everyone, know, it, most of our followers know Nala. Yeah. Ballerina, Ballerina in the Ballerina pool. Ballerina swimming in the pool. Yeah. So she is a perfect mix of Kelpie and American Bulldog. Yeah, isn't that that's, crazy? That's Nala. And, and her owners did not believe yeah, it. They're like, this is obviously wrong. Yeah. We'll go to another company. An independent DNA, DNA test. testing. And like exactly the exactly same. Exactly the same. So, yeah. Who are we to say that yeah. Rovo is not? You know, oh, you're, you're old, Rover. That's big chancy boy inside. <laughs> so that was pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Fair bit of shepherd in there, isn't there? I can definitely see in his behaviour the shepherd. Yeah. Um, we definitely do not see any herding from the border no. collie. No, not at all. You can see the playful, lovable nature of the bulldog. Though. Yeah. Just you. Just you. Oh, my, that's you, buddy. So good with kitties. Yeah. Yeah. Good boy, mate. So that's Rover. Good job, mate. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Super mutt. I'd love to see what that is. Like, why can they figure out that part of it? Yeah. So they came back with um, that they've tested it against the... 250 breeds that they've got on file. Mm. And he is something outside of that. Mm. And, you know, the 250 is pretty much most of the breeds that we can think of, you know. So, yeah. it, goodness, what what, it, what is it? Unique. Yeah. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? Oh, hello, right. tanky boy. Well, should we go have some pizza? Yeah, let's go Everyone? eat some pizza. Go check in with Diesel. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Freddie.